Hello, Assalamu alaikum everybody. Hope you're all safe, sound and healthy. And I'm back because so much happened yesterday. Uh, first of all, let's just start with the events within Pakistan and then we'll move on out. Um, for example, we have Rauf Hassan, who is not just a regular PTI member, but in fact, he is a political and security strategist, as well as the Central Information Secretary of PTI. And... Uh, he was attacked in broad daylight, allegedly by a pack of transgenders who stabbed him right outside the TV station GNN. And you know what's funny is that this was right after his press conference, but actually earlier in the morning when there was another uh, ch channel that he had to go to uh, for some sort of an interview or a show or something, when he l was leaving the building... Uh, he almost got attacked the first time round. Um, but I guess that time even he wasn't aware of it. Nobody was aware of it because people suddenly came out and, you know, the this alleged transgenders ran away. And then it happened the second time when they were successful. And this was when he had just finished his press conference. Actually, during his press conference, another news came, a bigger news, and that was related to Imran Khan getting another relief from the Islamabad High Court, which we'll come to later. Um, so sticking with this transgender theme, um, I find it very ironic. Uh, and why is it ironic is because if you look at how it was PTI's government that actually gave them that that law that they have been wanting for so long, um, giving them that recognition, that legal right and recognition, um, considering that that is a government responsible for them getting what they were fighting for for so long. And in fact, the current government, the current government was actually hell-bent on reversing that law, on, you know, reversing them getting their rights um, and recognition. Um when you keep all that in mind, don't you find that ironic that it had to be transgenders that would suddenly want to attack Rauf Hassan of all people? You know, um, this is the same transgender community that, you know, always claims to never be a part of the community, but to always be outside of the, uh, everybody that displays no fear, that has no, that cannot be intimidated. Um, and suddenly, finally, they get intimidated or suddenly for their personal benefit. Or are they trying to just tell us that like any other Desi, like any other, um, you know, uh, native, um, their own skin is more important, uh, you know, so they would sell their mothers even if they had to just for money or just for any personal benefit. Is that what is that the message with that they're trying to give us as a transgender community, which is supposed to be the very opposite of everything that follows the, that, you know, that would normally be what our culture is? I mean, I don't know. So it leads us then to the next question that maybe... Um, knowing that majority of the transgenders in the transgender community are not even bona fide transgenders, you know, yeah, imagine that even in the transgender community, and I'm talking about actual transgender, I'm not just talking about what Pakistani law refers to as transgender. Remember, um, Pakistani law refers to unisex as transgender. When we know that transgenders are basically people who are who actually belong to one gender, but uh, believe that they should belong to the other gender, right? Um, so, according to Pakistani law, transgenders are grouped under all unisex people, born people who are born without an actual sex, right? So they, they put the ball in in that. And that is why in Pakistan, whenever the court or the people talk about transgenders, they're actually talking about unisex. But now here's the thing. I'm talking about transgenders here. First of all, because we can rule out unisex completely. Um, secondly, as I said, we do not even have bona fide transgenders in Pakistan because most of them who go around acting like they're drag queens are not actually even drag queens, but they become drag queens because for them it's an easier way to make money. Yes. So believe it or not, but... Um, there are many men who go around acting as transgenders as well as acting as unisex because they seem to be able to collect a lot more money that way than they normally would. So, 
um, you know, now if you if you understand that, then you would also understand where where I'm coming from and where I'm going to, right? Considering again the fact that you have hired mercenaries who have been known to dress as women simply by the simple act of covering themselves up in a burqa, then you would understand that oh well, it's it's not even beyond them if suddenly some of the ISI agents would decide to dress up as transgenders and stab somebody in broad daylight why else i mean and to them it's probably some sort of a personal humor that okay let's stab you with the very law that you made in favor of this community let's use that against you so that was in very but you know knowing pakistanis i mean to me pakistani indian bangladesh they have a very very bad sense of humor uh to them personally mocking somebody is sense of humor so you know that poor taste in sense of humor can be seen here displayed by using this community um but yeah I mean, he has been injured in his face um his face has got bandages and all but he is in high spirits because he was immediately taken uh to emergency and he was treated and he's fine um hopefully he's going to be released asap if he hasn't already been released so when we think of all of that um uh, then you know you 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 do think that okay this act of intimidation was rather stupid and pathetic because again the army the isi the fifth columnists they need to understand one thing nobody is scared of them okay it's just that our people are just so lazy assed that they can't be bothered um except for the people in the northern areas who are putting up a good fight but the punjabis punjabis are lazy assed fools okay they're just going to take it slow and take it easy and they're only going to come and kill you when they've had enough it's as simple as that and apparently it seems the punjabis have a, a very high tolerance from the way they're moving on because they they erupt every now and then and then they again go back in and then they erupt and then they go you know so but again remember punjabis yeah no you cannot intimidate anybody okay and has have you has anybody noticed how it is the punjabi pti members that keep getting attacked have you heard of pti members in other provinces and getting attacked no have you heard of those in other provinces getting arrested no getting assaulted no getting kidnapped no the vast majority of the pti members that have been assaulted that have been attacked that have been kidnapped that have been missing they are all from punjab okay and right now again if you look at it uh, we've also got another poet who has also been suddenly uh kidnapped and he's been he's been put against the missing persons uh, missing persons list why um because he basically just said what everybody else was saying so i don't even know why they targeted him um it's just that he put it in a more beautiful poetic manner and i don't even understand why that had to be a problem because we have his namesake uh, legendary poets of the past who have you know written such poetries during the british raj and they've written such poetries before pakistan became independent and i don't see why it suddenly had to sting these a holes in the butt that he had written a very simple poetry in which he mentioned very basically what he mentioned was what we are all saying is that you know just say flat out that it, this is a dictatorship i mean why are you hiding like cowards behind a, a superficial system that doesn't even exist just come out and say you're dictators because you know it doesn't matter who says what and who thinks what no, for everything you have just one solution and that is kidnap the person you know just get rid of the person you know so that's the only solution that that the pakistani government and the pakistani army seems to have for everything and i don't see what was wrong in what he said because as i said we're all saying the same thing here so well as a result you know the army was like again as i said look at the pakistani sense of humor here the army is like okay so since you're saying that we're all about you know grabbing people and vanishing them let's vanish you too and there we are and now the courts are pretty peed off they're like produce him we don't care and in fact the the judges have even asked the isi that are you the ones ruling the country which is again what everybody else is asking so they're like are you ruling the country pray tell us then you know make it clear stop hiding behind like you know behind the 
American planted fifth columnists. Just just come out and say it. The peop- the army pe- personnel before you had more guts, it seems. At least they just came out and said it. Okay, we're establishing a dictatorship. What can you do? You know. So why are you so scared of doing that? Just come out and say it. So, yeah, speaking of high courts, um, as we know, there was uh, this... Um, these are ridiculous cases that have been put, uh, you know, just it just for the army to buy time for America, basically, so that America can use Pakistan to wage war again. Okay, so let's just not enter into that repetitive middle here. Um, but basically, so Imran Khan is, uh, uh, you know, people keep on saying, oh, another victory for Imran Khan, you know, another case thrown out, another the Turian White case was thrown out, which, by the way, on a side note, you know, seriously. Why do, did you know? Doesn't his daughter ever just come out and just wrap things up? I mean, you know, I would say his daughter because you know they allege that she's his biological daughter. He alleges that no, she's not. But in any case, he always took care of her. He's uh, Jemima took care of her. Um, they supported her, and now she's even married and gone. And you know. Well, I mean, as I said, I I do think sometimes that maybe she should just come forward and tell everybody to shut up. You know, I mean, after all, the whole trial is about her. The whole trial is about her. So, and everybody is is using her name, you know. So, I mean, sorry, but if I, if it was me, I would just come out and tell everybody to just shut the frack up and to go home and get lost and stop meddling in my life's affairs. But, if, you know, very strangely, um, the woman, you know, she's just quiet and she's disappeared and, you know, and she's just not saying anything She's not telling people to shut up even. So I don't know. I just find that weird. I find that weird. I mean, you know, if you're his biological daughter or not, in either case, I think you you owe it. You owe this much that you would just come and tell everybody to just shut up and stop mentioning your name at least, you know. I don't know. But I find it odd. I find it really weird, okay, that everybody's fighting over a girl or a woman now who can't even be bothered, you know, she just can't be bothered. And I guess that's why the judges were like, you know, they're like, you know what? I mean, seriously, what is this case about? This case has been thrown out twice already. Uh, we reserved our ju- decision. But OK, so, yeah, the judges, uh, there were a three, be- you know, a member, a three member, uh, you know, just just call it a bench of three. OK, so they um, initially reserved their decision. And this was last year, last year on March 30th, if, I, if I'm if i right. And at that time, you know, um, although they reserved the decision, but on the, on the website, they had posted, you know, the opinion and the notes of the judges and all, you know, so bringing about a conclusion that they would throw out the case so that they had basically thrown out the case. And although, um, you know, there was a press release issued later on saying that this was, the, you know, this was uploaded without issuance and that the Honorable Chief Justice would, you know, um, do a rehearing and this and that and blah, blah, blah. So after one year, they did, they did actually do this, you know, rehearing. And what did they do? They threw out the case. So they basically just proved that that, that that without issuance, <laughs> you know, opinion and side notes that were uploaded, con- giving a conclusion of the judgment was actually true because that was the, the judgment that they had reserved. And so all three judges, you know, they were like, okay, we're throwing out the case because this is non-cognizable. Okay, so that means that there is no case, that this, 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 there is, there is no case as far as they were concerned. So they threw it out. Now it comes to the Cypher case again. And again, the judge, you know, uh, Justice, Chief Justice Amr Farooq, he was like challenging the prosecutor um, that he had no evidence, he had no logic, and that, you know, he lacked in everything that was needed for a prosecutor to make his case. So he's like either produce the Cypher to prove your point or, you know, let's just wrap up the case because this is absolute madness. And also, as the judge also questioned, he's like, so, okay, so if if he, if he we did upset America, so, I mean, what's the big deal? I mean, are we American? I mean, I guess, I guess he's probably trying to say, are we Americans? I mean, again, it's the same question I've been asking. Are we, Pakistan, the colony of America that it is so upsetting for us now that it has become some sort of a treason that we've committed by upsetting the, oh, godly of godly states, United States of America? BS, really. You know, the dawn of the global mafia is upset 
that somebody has called it the dawn of the global mafia. Boo-hoo. Boo-hoo, America, seriously. Mofos. So, you know, but, but, you know, true to being the dogs of the Americans, we can see that our ISI is working so hard um, on trying to control the social media that they actually have a $135 million project set up to do that. But, I mean, you know, again, who's surprised here? I know I'm not. Um, because we know India did it. We know India controlled its, both its mainstream media and its social media. We know that America has done it. Uh, we know that Iran has also done it, yes. I mean, America especially, again, look at the two-faced, uh, you know, hip, hip, hypocrisy there, where America is talking about it being a free state and the leader of the free world. And there's nothing free. America itself is not a free state. So how can it be the leader of the free world, which is something I keep on and on saying. And then secondly, if America is so much about freedom, then why is it going around beating up and, and you know, arresting the students and the professors in the American universities that are protesting, you know, against the genocide? Side in Gaza, which, you know, you're taking their money to do that. You're taking their money to commit genocide. Obviously, they are going to protest. It's their money. It's their hard-earned money. You have no right. You're their servants. They're not your servants, you know. But there you have it. You have the imperialistic uh, governance again in America, where American government thinks that it owns everybody and everything on this in, in this world and on this earth. And that includes the American people, obviously. So... You know, I mean, the look at Metaverse. Um, that was one of the first uh, social media platforms that literally sold out its clients and its users. Um, Facebook, Instagram. In fact, as I said before, the reason I'm extremely peed off is that Metaverse bought WhatsApp. I'm pretty angry at the owners of WhatsApp. Why did they have to sell it to him of all people? Seriously. And you think that now people are actually going to believe him when he says that he's still maintaining the end-to-end -end encryption in WhatsApp? Yeah, people don't think so. Okay. So, I mean, come on. Metaverse is already, you know, um, laying itself out to be screwed by the governments all over the world. YouTube is following suit. So, I mean, it's no surprise here, you know. It's really no surprise here that in the name of, you know, uh, moral values, which literally basically means that as long as you're speaking up about moral values, YouTube and Metaverse are going to delete whatever it is that you've posted. But yes, if you write in favor of the immoral acts committed by the American government and by its touts all over the world, like the Pakistani government or, you know, anywhere else in the world where you have its touts, um, then, you know, yeah, then, then kudos to you, then they're actually going to promote your posts. So there's no surprise there, really, um, that they're going to spend all that money on uh, trying to fully control social media. So, yeah, so we've got these, these things going on. You've got the um, Imran Khan getting relief. and all. But, I mean, again, the reason why I just don't like to talk so much about Imran Khan getting relief is, okay, we've seen it time and again. He keeps on getting relief, and then, you know, they keep on concocting new cases against him. And as, as I said, they're trying to buy time. You know, and the only way they can do that without killing him is keeping him in jail. Okay, they need time. As I told you, they need at least a year. Six months is good too, but a year is ideal. So, yeah. I mean, and when it comes to now Iran, I mean, as I said, speaking about America and speaking about, you know, buying time and everything. Um, Look at Iran. I mean... Can you imagine that the United States actually had the gall to make the statement that, you know, the two, two of its statements that I, I literally, you know, uh, could not help but scorn at, um, you know, first they said that, you know, it's not them and it's not the Israelis and that they think that whoever it is are elements from within. And then they said that they feel that after that, I mean, at least they said it through their press, I mean, to, through New York Times and others, you know, they used the, the their press and their media to sort of, you know, uh, give out that message that they think that people... Uh, that that basically the new Iranian government will or the new president, you know, so they will have a more cautious, less aggressive policy, um, you know, and so and basically the things they think that things will be more in their favor, right? Um, so again, number one, 
you have the gall to say that it's from somebody is it's somebody it's an in, inner conflict and that you expect more uh you know inner conflict before the elections because you think that there there is actually going to be some sort of this really hot and heated election going on where people you know sh- stakeholders are going to you know come forward again how do you know that it's because it's probably your own people that are inside there that are going to drive the conflict and that are going to try to come up and take presidentship right these are the same people who you planted there or who you have as assets there that you used to try and create a so called revolution in iran and failed miserably at least twice right so yeah maybe that's why you know that it's somebody from inside so even if it's somebody from inside these are your people doing your bidding so it's you at the end of the day okay and number 2 again the confidence with which you say that you feel that the you know that after the elections that whoever takes hold of the government they will be more cautious and less aggressive and they will be more careful in their risk assessment you know um okay so it's uh, i guess the confidence with which you're saying all that means that you are actually hoping and expecting that your people are going to come and take the reins of the government and like how you've got pakistan under your control finally so you will finally get iran too to be under your control right that is basically what you're trying to say isn't it that now you will be able to control and command iran too let's see what actually happens okay uh so well there we have it this is all that happened in 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 a span of 24 to 48 hours seriously um what else can i say i think i think that if even the even the argument actually concerning uh the the helicopter before i forget that is i mean remember how in the beginning everybody was like you know um the age or the model of the of the helicopter should not even be um of any concern because no matter how old the equipment are they are in top notch condition because they are they are always maintained uh, in you know perfectly and they are very very well maintained um so that should never be uh, you know uh, a question and yet suddenly that has become a question suddenly they're like why was he given an older helicopter um you know uh, why was he made to ride in a helicopter that could have had very easily technical issues because of its age and because of its model and stuff so again you know i think the more self contradictory um people get in these questions or in these excuses or justifications that they're trying to make the more it raises doubts that yes um you know this was a planned assassination attempt by america and israel how they did it is of it doesn't matter to anybody how they did it okay what everybody as long as as every, uh, i mean as far as everybody's concerned what matters is, is that they did it it's as simple as that so if anything it has just increased the strength of the doubts against the usa and israel that they may have used insiders they may have been them it may have been directly themselves but in any case they are the ones behind it as they are the ones behind everything else that's going on in most parts of the world as i said we're dealing with lunatics right now it's amazing well this is me signing out khuda hafiz